Good evening. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us all welcome our presiding priest, Father Rolly Agustin. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be Jesus the bread from heaven. May his grace and peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we are celebrating the 19th Sunday in ordinary time and let us pray that God may nurture us not only with the bread for the body but most especially by the bread that will nurture our soul. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries which we will receive Jesus as the bread of life, let us reflect on what makes us worthy to do so. Lord Jesus, no one can come to you unless the Father draws him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the bread and drink that that can down from that came down from heaven Christ have mercy Christ have mercy Lord Jesus you give your flesh for the life of the world Lord have mercy Lord have mercy may the almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen <laughs> Receive our 
ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for that, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time touched him and ordered, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. 
Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the afflicted man called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed a man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love. As Christ loved us and handed himself over to us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? How can he say, I came down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate man in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me share with you stories and let us see what is common among the three stories that I will share with you. One is from the 16th century explorer. Another is the 20th century senior citizens. And the last one is about an ancient Chinese emperor would have something in common. Huh? First, the 16th century explorer. His name is Ponce de Leon. Shortly after Columbus discovered America, rumors spread that the New World contained a fountain of youth. Ponce de Leon outfitted the ship and sailed to America to search for the legendary fountain. That brings us to the senior citizens. They are the old people in the movie Cocoon, if you still remember that, the movie Cocoon. These old people experience a return to their youth when they bathe in a swimming pool secretly used by aliens from another planet. Their exciting experience prompted them to accept an invitation from the aliens to go back with them to their planet. The senior citizens were told that once they reach their alien planet, they will live forever. And finally, we come to the ancient Chinese emperor. His name is Qin. I don't know if you've heard this story. Of course, this is just a legend. Qin is the emperor who built the Great Wall of China. Extending over 2,000 miles, the Great Wall, as you well know, is the only man-made structure on Earth that the astronauts could identify from outer space. According to National Geographic magazine, Emperor Qin had a great fear of dying. One day, his magicians told him about an island paradise in the Eastern Sea. Its inhabitants had discovered the secret to eternal life, the fountain of youth also. Qin loaded several ships with priceless gifts and dispatched them to the island's inhabitants, hoping to trade the gifts for their secret. Reportedly, the ships found the islands, but the islanders wouldn't exchange their secret for such paltry gifts. What is common among the three stories? What is common is the dream of man not to die. The quest of man to have life forever or eternal life that is from the beginning of time man has this quest for eternal life for life forever nobody wants to die with each death of a loved one we become very interested even obs obsessed with eternal life huh? and i know that uh, people put their trust that there is eternal life. And so when Jesus appeared to the Jews preaching eternal life, they were very interested. Because who would not be interested to have eternal life? They were interested because from the time of Moses, from Abraham to Moses and the prophets, they all mentioned about the world of the dead or eternal life, which I think they called Hades. However, they do not know what it is, what exactly is the world of the dead. And uh, when Jesus appeared, preaching about eternal life, oh, they were all interested. They wanted to hear from Jesus what is this eternal life. And once he spoke, he spoke this remarkable uh, passage in the Bible about eternal life. When he mentioned and said, in today's gospel, we have, I am the bread of life that comes down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. That means our life here on earth 
is not at the end. We are just on a journey. Huh? This is not the destination. The destination is the eternal life. We are just a pilgrim here on earth. Therefore, that is not an end. It is the crossing to the other life, as I always say when I have a mass for the dead. However, the Jews ended up murmuring. They ended up murmuring because Jesus said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. And they said, how could it be possible? We know his father Joseph and his mother Mary. We know where he lives. How can he be, how can he say that he comes down from heaven? And uh, only when Jesus rose from the dead later on, that the Jews started considering the message of Jesus about eternal life. But at the beginning, they were merry murmuring. There were those, there were uh, disciples of Jesus who, when he, they heard this, especially when he said, my flesh, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, that will be for next week. Because we have, this is already the third uh, gospel pericope about the Eucharist on John chapter 6. The two first previous weeks we had already on John chapter 6. This is the third. There's another one coming next week. And so I will leave that message there. But here, the emphasis, our first message is this, that Jesus is the bread that will give us life eternal. The answer to the quest of man is eternal life. And God, Jesus, is present to us when two or three are gathered in my name to receive him. He is present there. However, it is unfortunate that uh, we don't have public celebration of the Mass. And knowing the importance of the Eucharist to nourish our life, we have communion. It's only in this parish that we have communion after the Mass in the whole of the diocese. It's only this parish, so you should be lucky. And uh, Jesus is also present when the gospel is be being proclaimed. Jesus is present in the person of the minister, the priest, who celebrates the Mass for you. Jesus is present in the bread as the bread that will give us eternal life. And when we receive Jesus through the communion, we are nurtured. We are given life. And therefore, let me expound the second point in connection to the first. In the first reading today, Elijah, we have heard, was already very tired because he was being pursued by the king and the queen, Jezebel. They wanted to kill him. And so he was on the run. And he wanted to give up already, right? He was on a journey towards Mount Horeb. Okay. And what is my reflection on this about uh, Saint uh, of uh, Prophet Elijah? What is my reflection? Like Elijah, we are on a journey towards Mount Horeb, towards eternal life. And uh, in our journey here on earth, we experience difficulties, sufferings, like what we are suffering now, even fear, fear of death, because of the threat of coronavirus delta variant. Many are already dying among the priests, one after the other. There are four priests who died the last two weeks. Four priests died yesterday, another one died at a very young age, and not 60s. I think he is only in his 50s, early 50s, and he died. And he has a good physical health. No morbidity from what I have heard. Talo pa ako, kaya delikado tayo dyan. Okay. And he had no comor comorbidity. He died. And of course, what is instilled in us? Fear. Fear, stress, and anxiety. And not only that, we experience also the emptiness. Uh, emptiness of life as we face all these challenges and difficulties in life. 
And what is my reflection? Where do we get our strength? Where do we get our spiritual nourishment? It is from the Eucharist. That's why the church, our parish, is open the whole day, every day, to visit, for, for you to visit and get strength and spiritual nourishment as you adore before the Blessed Sacrament, which is exposed on the altar. It is open. And therefore, you can come, of course, observe the protocol. And uh, because I do believe that our parishioners can get spiritual nourishment as they adore the Blessed Sacrament, even if they cannot attend the Holy Mass in, 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 uh, in real presence. And the third of my reflection is this. Elijah was headed to Mount Horeb at the summit of Mount Horeb. And from our catechism, it tells us that the Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life. Uh, the source and summit of Christian life. That means it is from the spring of the Eucharist where we can get life. And when I speak life, of course, I am not talking about the physical life. I'm talking about the interior life. I'm talking about the spiritual life of each one of us. There is a spiritual life. Those who rely only on the material things, those who rely only on the temporal things, will surely experience the, and face the wall of emptiness of life if there is nothing spiritual in their life. The source of our spiritual life, the source of life, is the Eucharist. It is also the summit, the peak of life. It is our experience and relationship with God that will bring us to the peak of life. No material things can provide. No money can provide. No pleasure can provide. No comfort can provide our relationship and experience of God because the Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life. It is only then when we spend time in silence with God, in prayer, especially before the Blessed Sacrament, if we want to make adoration here in the church, that we can experience life. Remember what happened to Elijah when we, he reached Mount Horeb. There was thunder and lightning, but God was not there. Huh? It was through the gentle breeze that Elijah encountered God. When he was tired on his journey, he wanted to give up life. And he was fed by the angel. How do we define the Eucharist? It is the bread of the angels. Huh? Panem angelicum, the bread of the angels. It is what fed Elijah to give him life. It is what will feed us with life. The bread of the angels, the sacrament of the Eucharist. And it is through the Eucharist that we will reach the source and summit of our Christian life that we will experience life. As we face all these difficulties, all the emptiness of life now, all the anxiety, it is the Eucharist which is the source and summit of Christian life. Therefore, to end my homily, because we cannot experience that without faith, let us end with a prayer and let this be our prayer for the week, our point for reflection. In the silence of your heart, share with me this prayer. God, our Father, you have given us so much. Forgive us if we ask for one more thing. Give us the faith to recognize the spirit of your Son in the hearts of our brothers and sisters, in the church, in our celebration right now, even if you are only live streaming. Give us the faith to recognize the voice of your Son in the word we have just read and heard explained to us. But above all, give us the faith to recognize the body of your Son in the bread we now prepare to break and share, and you can receive after the Mass. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord, through whom, with whom, and in whom we will one day live with you and the Holy Spirit, to experience life, life forever. Amen.
Let us all stand and we proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. God's care and concern for us has always been so great, and such He will continue to be, confident that He will be with us in our journey through life to lead, protect, and strengthen us as we pray, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Church, God's pilgrim people on earth, when faced with rejection and persecution, may she never lose heart, but fully trust in God's help. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father, our Bishop, and all our religious leaders, may they be for us like the angel sent by the Lord to strengthen and encourage the prophet Elijah. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For the social and political leaders of our country, may they always seek and promote the good of the people, especially those who are weak, exploited, or defenseless. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are rejected and persecuted because of their faithfulness to the gospel, may they stand fast in their faith, fully trusting in the Lord's help. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For our community and our families, heeding the exhortation of St. Paul, May we put aside all bitterness and malice and learn to be kind, forgiving, and compassionate with one another. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us include all those who have died, especially those who have died because of COVID, including the priests, They are the priests in our diocese or staying in our diocese and we know them. We pray for them. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, thank you for continually being with us despite our failures and infidelities. May we express our sincere recognition of your love for us by being kind to one another, compassionate and forgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the bread your body. This is the wine, your blood. We gather them together, we lift them up to you. And all that we have, we offer them to His blessings to you, Lord, we gather. Your altar. 
Dear sisters and brothers, that these are sacrifices may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transformed them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His birth, He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by His suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, he was betrayed and, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jesse, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with St. James and the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, violence, calamities, COVID, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. The bread that will give us eternal life. Happy are we who are invited to the meal of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. 
merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We, we thank you for the vaccines developed, developed made, possible made possible by your guiding hands. hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the, to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence, with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strengthen their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us, Give us the grace, grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We are concerned and compassion for each other. See us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint James the Great, pray for us. Prayer to Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian and the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted His only Son, in you Mary placed our trust. With you Christ became man. Bless our Joseph to us too. Show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and depend us from evil. Amen. Day 2 of the Novena for the Solemnity of the Assumption Poverty Poverty is another trait of our, Lord, of our Lady during her whole life, but we want to underline it from the beginning of her journey. All paths taken suppose and demand poverty. It is impossible to go on a journey if we are loaded with too many things. A journey is always a detachment from persons and things. The poverty of Mary was a progressive detachment, a mysterious insecurity and a dark premonition. Her poverty fulfills perfectly the messianic ideal of a humble and modest people, the Anawim, who remain faithful and, to, and who seek refuge in the name of the Lord. Jesus thought of her above all when he proclaimed, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Jesus did nothing but describe Mary when he proclaimed the Beatitudes. Thanks to this radical and evangelical poverty, Mary lived in total simplicity open to the word of God, and in joyful dependence on his will. Prayer. Lord God, with, with, with love you look at the humble and the, and the poor, and, and you reveal to them, as you revealed to Mary, the presence of your Son. By your Spirit, allow us to see you in the poor, the sick, and forgotten who remain in the peripheries of society. We thank you for all our alumni, benefactors and friends, especially those who support the community pantries all over the country and the world. May we continue to be generous in sharing our blessings with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.